and um, thank you, Pauli and um, Kimo, for your kind invitation. Um, so my talk today is about um, make um, <coughs> aligning um, European repositories to the um, open air guidelines. Um, I wonder if uh, here are any uh, repository managers, either institutional, thematic, or data <laughs> repositories. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we are not not alone. <laughs> um, so um, why about um, repositories? Um, here's a statement um, from a working group uh, in CoR, um, Next Generation Repositories, saying that um, repositories are the foundation for distributed, globally networked infrastructure. And uh, most importantly, uh, they need to be collectively managed by the scholarly um, community. Um, so following the principles of, of open science. I outlined my presentation uh, that I give a, a brief introduction to open air, then coming to the open air interoperability guidelines. Um, and last but not least, I will talk about the open air services and the benefits um, they should provide to um, repositories, for instance. Um, so uh, open air wouldn't be possible uh, without the open access, open science policies and mandates of the European Commission. Um, <clears throat> so the different phases of open air, which started um, in 2009, um, are strongly related um, to measurements of the European Commission, starting with the open access pilot, um, for publications um, in Framework uh, Program 7. And this was the moment when, when also the Open Air project started um, with the mission to um, collect um, publications with an acknowledgement statement saying this is funded um, in FP7 and report this to the European Commission. Um, and you can also see that the different stages also always started with a pilot um, and then um, it was made mandatory um, for all publications, the same for um, research data starting in Horizon 2020 is now a default um, to make uh, research data um, available um, of uh, funded uh, H 2020 projects. And also um, the launch of the European Open Science Cloud um, is a clear consequence of um, these measurements of the European Commission. And uh, we will, uh, despite all of the challenges, uh, see quite optimistic in the future with the uh, next um, research program, Horizon Europe, when uh, open science is declared as a uh, modus operandi. Um, so what is open air? It's a quite large project with about 50 partners um, across Europe. And we are focused on um, mainly three aspects um, which are connected, which are um, where one area guides and drives the other. So it's the technical infrastructure um, where we have um, an aggregation service where we collect um, different kinds of research output um, not only from repositories, but mainly, um, then we make it um, visible via the portal. Uh, we provide um, dashboards for different stakeholders, like um, uh, for funders, um, for uh, institutions, but uh, also um, for content providers. And we are offering an, a machine interface um, <clears throat> so that third-party services or innovators can build on the content um, that OpenAir provides. Of course, um, and it was also mentioned in, in, uh, by the first speaker today, that um, the policy landscape um, in Europe uh, with regard to open access, open science is quite complex and challenging. And one of the aims of OpenAir was and is um, to align to contribute to the alignment of those um, policies, but also um, to work in the area um, of, of studies to uh, provide recommendations um, about legal issues, 
to overcome legal issues um, and intellectual property rights, for instance, especially with regard to research data. Um, but also, um, in relation to our aggregation service, um, we need um, some kind of agreement to, with content providers how they should provide their metadata uh, to open air. Um, therefore, we issued um, guidelines. And most importantly is the a strong human network um, in open air, which um, consists of the 34 uh, national open access desks, among them the Nords uh, from Finland. And they are working um, on a national level uh, with fostering um, open science in, in their communities and also providing support and training uh, measurements like um, by workshops or webinars and um, publishing um, <coughs> fact sheets and, <laughs> and guides on, on different aspects of open science. Um, so, in the past there were um, sometimes questions um, um, who, who is using um, open air um, services, uh, so what are our stakeholders and, and here are identified um, four uh, groups, so we have the funders and institutions which are interested in monitoring um, their um, uh, research output. Um, we have the um, content providers and, and research infrastructures um, where we want to collect um, their content and make them visible, but we also want to provide uh, services, value-added services um, for these type of stakeholders. We have um, innovators that can access um, the scholarly information graph um, from open air um, to build more sophisticated services. And of course, we have the uh, very important group of researchers and research communities where we offer our discovery services. Um, on the right side, um, I've chosen just uh, two um, collaboration projects and initiatives. Of course, um, open air is connected to much, um, much more projects and much more initiatives. Um, but I think um, these two are also um, related um, to um, repositories, because with a uh, collaboration with EOSC Hub, which um, addresses three pillars like um, service integration um, to make the um, to, to provide a seamless information flow of research results among services between open air and the federated infrastructures of EOSC Hub, but also to work together um, towards um, <coughs> communication activities um, and producing uh, training materials together and of course also to align the different strategies of these um, um, projects. And I think this is an opportunity where all the content which we have in uh, European repositories um, to make them um, an entry point um, to um, the uh, EOSC portal. Um, but also OpenAir um, collaborates with the Confederation of Open Access Repositories, which is a, a global lobbying um, initiative um, for open access repositories. And here it is important um, <coughs> to overcome the issues of um, data silos, to see repositories as data silos. It's important um, to uh, make the content of repositories visible um, globally and connected um, with other um, scholarly output. And this is also an activity within CORE in the Next Generation Repositories Working Group, um, which analyzed several user behaviors um, and provide or promotes um, some technical um, solutions to upgrade um, the technology of repositories um, to a more uh, web-compliant standard. Open-air numbers, uh, just a few. Um, in our production environment, um, you can discover 25 million publications um, where the majority um, is open access. Um, we have collected and indexed 1 million um, of research data sets. 
um, we collect this information from uh, around, or no, in other words, um, this content is available uh, in about 14,000 um, content providers. Um, we work together um, with 18 funders um, in Europe and, and worldwide in order um, to identify the research output um, from the projects funded by these funders. And so we identified at the moment um, 20.7 um, million um, grants. Um, <coughs> this is a view on the uh, quite complex um, infrastructure of open air. Um, so we collect all our information from authoritative, authoritative databases or registries like uh, funded databases. Um, we make use of um, directories um, for open access journals or directories of open access repositories or re 3 data for, for data repositories to identify the relevant data sources. Um, we gather content in form of metadata, um, if possible also the full text files, um, and also um, we would like to track um, usage data um, or usage events from, from these sources. Um, the content is then is going through a pipeline of different services um, to, to, to normalize the content, which is then stored um, in the information database of OpenAir um, by generating an information graph of different entities, um, which provides um, main features like and enriching um, the aggregated content, make them discoverable, but also um, offering a feedback um, chain um, to, to the users. The content is available for, for monitoring. Um, for instance, that the funders can see um, the research outputs of their projects, but also um, for uh, project beneficiaries to um, report um, their publications um, to their funders. Um, the APIs are available for developers and a couple of um, text, and text and data mining services um, <coughs> provide more sophisticated services um, that allow to assess um, evaluations or impacts or research trends. Um, there are a few um, Recent services um, released, like the Open Access Broker Service, which I um, present at the end of my presentation, um, and the Scholarly Explorer, um, which allows um, exploring links between publications and, and data sets, uh, which is actually also an outcome of an RDA um, working group. So I've shown you that um, we collect content from various types of data sources. And this has challenges, of course, with regard to interoperability. Um, we collect different groups of research results, which are publications, data sets, software, and so-called other research products. And we identified that all these groups of research results can exist um, at the same time in, in, in um, each of these kinds of data sources like institutional repositories, journals, data repositories, uh, software repositories, and so on. So we need some kind of agreement. And um, so we started with issuing um, guidelines. Um, the first were about the uh, or addressing the textual publications and institutional thematic repositories. Um, extended then uh, by guidelines for data archives, um, for software repositories and other research products. And most recently, um, we also updated guidelines um, for CRIS platforms, um, which now also allows that we can aggregate um, content from current research information systems. So we, we <coughs> can deal with uh, rich um, research information in open air. 
Um, a complement to these guidelines is the um, open air content acquisition policy. And this is needed for different reasons. Uh, one reason is that we um, extended our scope not only to collect um, open access publications or publications linked um, to, to projects, um, but to collect all kinds um, of research output regardless of their access um, status. And the content acquisition policy addresses different aspects. Um, the one is that we need an agreement with um, content providers that Open Air allows to reuse metadata um, and other files, um, for instance, for text and data mining. Um, but also um, to agree on a certain level of uh, content quality, um, which is then more refined in the Open Air guidelines. Um, we also want to serve um, different research communities uh, so that we can link the content in open air with domain specific research results. Um, we also want to enable um, reproducibility and for this aim it is important that we can link um, publications with other research output and <coughs> we want to provide monitoring um, for instance for funders. Um, in December last year, we issued the most recent version of these guidelines for literature repository managers. Um, it's still based on formats um, that are aimed for descriptive metadata, like Dublin Core and, and Datasite metadata schema. Um, we consider here that um, in many repositories, we find both kinds of output, textual and data publications. So we need not one format which um, <coughs> we can use to describe different kinds of outputs. Um, we make use of controlled vocabularies, um, which are also aligned with other open air um, guidelines. Um, the goals of these metadata guide, uh, guidelines are that we want to be able to discover and make the content um, citable. Um, <coughs> we want that the content is accessible and um, able for reuse. Um, we want to contextualize the research output with other projects or with the related projects and other uh, research artifacts, for instance, data sets. Um, we want to support interoperability um, which requires uh, stable, persistent identifiers for the entities and the use of controlled um, vocabularies. Um, we want to allow reporting, which requires um, references to funding information in the metadata. And we want to support text and data mining, uh, which requires certain license conditions and also um, <coughs> the provision where such files, for instance, the full text is located. Um, I don't want to talk much about the guidelines for quiz managers because we will have another talk in the afternoon about this topic and some early results. Um, but I want to mention that from the open air perspective, we see that the quiz can be used uh, for different cases. As an institutional quiz, uh, which like a repository, exposes the research output but also the funder quiz, which OpenAI could use as an authoritative database about the funding programs and projects. And the national quiz, which acts as a national aggregator of research information. <coughs> um, in this slide, I show the current um, compatibility of the data sources in OpenAI. Um, on the right side, it's a compatibility level for um, repository data sources, which in some are about 980. And on the right side, it's a compatibility level for journal data sources. Um, what we can see here is that the majority of data sources um, still comply on the very basic level. So <coughs> exposed descriptive metadata, um, where we often 
miss um, some more information um, like links to other research output or um, are missing links to funding information. Um, here's a list of a few challenges we are faced in our daily work when we aggregate uh, content from repositories, um, the problem of missing values, um, the problem that we are missing links and identifiers. Um, <coughs> still quite often controlled vocabularies are not used or not uh, in the agreement we offer um, them in the open air guidelines. Um, or the metadata descriptions are not comprehensive enough, so they um, provide just the mandatory values, which <coughs> limitates the abilities of discovery and reuse. So what are um, open air services which repositories could benefit from? Um, so I present here a few of open air services, but want to um, limit on the last three ones, uh, which is the registration and validation servers, um, <coughs> the open access broker service for content enrichment, and the user statistics service. You can also find all these services um, in the EOSC um, service catalog, which is so it's just already integrated there. Um, for repository managers, OpenAir offers a content provider dashboard where a repository manager can register um, with an account and register and validate its data source. Um, it can subscribe to the Open Access Broker service to uh, receive notifications um, on specific metadata records, or it can also join um, the user statistics service. The registration is uh, quite straightforward to choose um, the type of data source and then go to a few steps um, to register the interface of the repository. We try always to um, reuse information um, from existing directories like OpenDoor or Re3Data. Um, features for repository managers are that they can view um, the validation history. It's also in preparation to provide a continuous validation, so not only at the time of registration of the data source, but also um, each, each time um, the repository is harvested or aggregated, um, which can then be seen in the collection monitor. The broker service is an opportunity um, to complete or provide additional information about open access, uh, about the metadata records um, in a repository. Um, and this addresses different aspects like completing information about persistent identifiers. Um, then the problem, for instance, that um, a publication in a repository um, is not available as open access, but in another repository or journal the, uh, the open access version might be available, so this information can then be enriched. Enrichment of project information, um, <coughs> of classification of subjects, or um, abstract information. The user statistics service um, is an opportunity to where, where open air um, tracks usage events from the repositories about the uh, views and, and, and downloads, and then calculates, calculates um, counter-compliant usage statistics. Um, the advantage in open air here is that we can, thanks to our the data application um, service, accumulate the usage of a publication which is uh, stored in different um, sources. And in this way to provide a more comprehensive view of, of the usage of a publication, for instance. And this is how it looks like in the dashboard and in the portal, so we can provide statistics on the level um, of the whole um, repository or as a view um, of um, a specific item of a specific publication, for instance. And that's it.